But before we begin, I'd ask that Dr. Samuels be allowed to make the correction to what the state had said claimed was true when it wasn't true according to his notes. Well, you can do that on, redir on redirect. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Mr. Martinez, you may continue. Sir, you wrote a report that codified or indicated this issue or talked about this issue involving uh, the shower and the taking of photographs, correct? Yes. Take a look at Exhibit 538. Recognize it? Well, I'd have to see it in the context of my report. Well, so. why don't you get your report out and take a look at it? Okay. I have to find the page that it's on. It's not numbered. What's that? I have to find the page that it was on. It's not numbered. Here it is. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry? What page number? Oh, it's on page 8 of my report. The and third paragraph. Is that a true and accurate depiction of what you said involving this issue and the shower? Yes. I may have it back. And she did tell you that it was his request to take pictures of him with the water from the shower running at the time, right? Yes. Did you get a chance, as part of the review in this case, to see the uh, interview between the defendant and Detective Flores? Yes. And there's an inconsistency there, isn't it? Well, I think she may have been talking about a different date. But the whether it may be a different date, that's your interpretation of it, right? Well, from what I gather, from my recollection, it was referring to a different episode because there was not just one taking the photographs in the shower. And I don't recall that. I'd have to see the clip, obviously, to see and get a, a, a date of that interview. But if I recall, uh, they were referring to two separate incidents. That, that's what you believe as you sit here today, That's right? That's what I believe, yes. You and the defendant also discussed um, what happened in the closet, right? Yes. And in fact, one of the things that... Uh, he told you was that he was coming after her and that he grabbed her sweater or something like that and she remembered the gun. May I see that again within the context of my report? Well, no, let's play it, okay? Let me I'll play it, go. okay. Did you want to approach? You may. You may continue. Please take a look at exhibit, or listen to exhibit 539. If you can't listen or hear it, let me know. Perhaps she's talking about another door, but she's coming after. He grabbed her sweater or something like that, she said. And she remembered the gun, she took the gun and pointed it at him, and then she said, oh, well, it's the gun. I think it was on a shelf in the closet. Do you hear that? That is your voice, correct? Yes. And that's a conversation that you and I had, correct? Yes. And during that conversation, isn't it true that you told me that you discussed with the defendant what happened involving the shooting of Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And what you told me was that she told you that he grabbed the sweater. Do you hear yourself saying that? Yes. And that uh, you also said that it was something like that, and when he grabbed the sweater, she remembered the gun, right? Something like that. Those well, are my recollections uh, for, during that interview. Well, let's play it again so that uh, we get it clear. This is 539. Perhaps 
she remembered the gun, she took the gun and pointed it at him, and then she said, what well, was the gun? I think it was on a shelf in the closet. Did you hear yourself there? Yes. And you did say that he grabbed her sweater, right? Yes. And this is according to her because you weren't there, right? That's my characterization. I'm not sure if she actually said sweater or just grabbed onto her, but it's possible that I said sweater. Well, you did say that, right? Yes. Those are your words, Those correct? are my words. No one has done anything to your words, right? No. And you did right. say that he grabbed her sweater or something like that, right? Right. You're indicating that Mr. Alexander, gra according to the defendant, grabbed her by the clothing, right? Right. And that they were in the closet when he grabbed her by the clothing, right? Approximately, yes. Well, no, that's not what you say. And what you said is he grabbed her sweater or something like that, and she said, and she remembered the gun. So she remembers the gun at the time that he's grabbing her by the sweater or the clothing, right? That's what she. That's what I recall her telling me. Yes, but I do have it in my notes here. I, I'm not judging the approach. You may. You may continue. You said that you have your notes in front of you, right? Yes. And it references this, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And why don't you tell me what your notes say with regard to this grabbing of the sweater? And what, are you, what is the exhibit that you're looking at, sir? I'm looking at my notes from 42110. I know. What's the exhibit number? It's the green tent. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was here. Uh, 537. Would you like me to read this whole incident? No, I want you to read the part about involving the sweater. Well, there's nothing in here that specifically says sweater. But we had this conversation and you told me about it, right? Right. But you did tell me during that conversation that he grabbed her, right? That's correct. And he grabbed an article of her clothing, right? That's right. He did grab some article of her right. clothing. Right. And at the time that your notes reflect this, at the time that he grabbed this article of clothing is when she remembered the gun, right? That's right. And then that's when she got the gun, right? That's what was told to me, yes. And that's what you have in your notes, right? Yes. Um, there was an issue as to whether or not you were unclear as to whether or not she shot him in the closet or not, right? That's right. You were at some at one point of the opinion that she did shoot him in the closet at one point, right? I don't recall. What are you you're not referring to my report, are you? Sure. Take a look at your notes mm -hmm. as to whether or not you ever indicate in there that she shot him in the closet once, and maybe you indicate something else somewhere else. No, I know that they went into the closet. Or she went into the closet, um, grabbed the gun. Um, in an don't, attempt. Don't read, sir, don't read it to us. We, I want to, you to refresh your recollection. Well, I, I am refreshing. Okay. I, I Silently. Okay. And uh, she remembered the gun, pointed the gun, doesn't specifically remember the gun being shot. Okay. In an attempt. But I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking you where. Where it was, was around she? the closet, whether it was right. in or around the closet. Okay. That wasn't as important to me. I understand that it's not as important to you, but what your notes reflect that it was in or around the closet when she fired the gun, right? That's yes. Cool. All right. Sir, one of the other tests that, that um, you uh, administered was this, uh, this Milan test, correct? The Milan. Milan. It's MCMI, right? Yes. And, sir, yesterday, one of the things we were talking about was the answers to questions or the questions in the other test, the PSD test, 15 through uh, whatever the remainder were. Did you bring those with you? I did. May I take a look at them, please? Sure. What specifically are you looking for? Uh, the questions to the PSD. Yes, I have those. And, sir, this is the packet of questions that you sort of put under the, or in front of the defendant, so that she can answer, correct? Yes. Well, then why is it, sir, that it was faxed to you on January 22nd of 2010? I mean, don't you just have these sitting around? Or what? Those questions? Yeah. It's probably just a, a fax that I have laying around. I made a copy of something I had in my drawer for purposes of court. But it's not necessarily the exact set of questions that I handed her. I have about 10 copies of that. 
Well, what, what I'm talking about, sir, is that take a look at Exhibit 534. Which exhibit is that, sir? I, I'm going to show it to you oh. once it comes out of the monitor, okay. and I'll do it right now. This is the PDS that you had, uh, told us yesterday you administered to the defendant, correct? Yes. And the date on there is January 15th of 2010, correct? Right. Whereas the date on this one here, 540, is January 22nd of 2010, correct? No, no, you're incorrect. That may be the date that's on there, but that's not the same list of questions that I gave her. I have numerous copies in my office, and I simply prepared copies for court and staple groups together. That's not the same copy that was given to her. The, the fax date on there is irrelevant. So what you're saying is what you gave me is not what you is not the paperwork that you actually gave her. It's a copy of what you gave her. It's a copy of what I gave her. Yes. What what happened to the one that you actually gave her? It's somewhere in my drawer. I have 10 copies of questions and I take them with me when I use it. I get the questions back. I put them back in my drawer so that I can use them again. So this is something that you keep reusing again over and over. And the questions, yes. And you don't keep a separate sheet in the in the file of the person that you conducted the that test That would be on. unnecessary. So the answer is no, you don't. You Could don't, you repeat your, the particular question that you want me to say you yes to? You don't keep the actual questions along with the answers as part of the file. Not the one that was touched by the client necessarily, no. Do you keep a copy of the questions along with the answers in the file always? No. In other words, what you're telling us, I believe, is that you only keep the Answers, you don't keep the questions in the file. That's correct. It's unnecessary. And yesterday we looked at uh, my copy, but basically this is sort of what I showed you yesterday, right? Yes. Part one that we previously discussed and part two what we previously discussed, correct? Yes. I move for the admission of exhibit number 540. 540 is admitted. You see question 15 here? Yes. If we then go to question 15, it says, how long ago did this traumatic event happen? Do you see that? Yes. What's the answer? Well, why don't we take first a look at item 14 right. to see which one she marked off. Number that four. Was, that was number four, a non-sexual assault by a stranger. Right. And how long ago was it? That she indicated in yes. Uh, here? Yes. Um, 15. Uh, four. Six months to three years. And we're again talking about this incident that she described to you when a guy and a girl came in and killed Mr. Alexander, correct? Because that's what she's describing to you previous to this, right? Yes, I believe so. And during this traumatic event, she was asked if she was, number 16, physically injured. Right? Yes. And her answer was, well, there's yes. two of them. Well, no, there's a yes and there's a no. Is it, so she, it's a yes. Is she that checked off under the yes. Okay. And then 17 was, was someone else physically injured? She said yes, correct? Yes. Number 18, did you think that your life was in danger? And she said yes. Yes. And she was in danger from these two individuals, correct? Yes, at that time. Right. But this is when she filled this out, right? Yes. And number 19, did you think that someone else's life was in danger? Of course, she's talking about Mr. Alexander based on what she told you, right? Yes. And number 20, she was asked if she felt helpless. And 21, if she felt terrified, right? Well, I don't, yes, you have that. It's covered, but yes, that's, that's what I would call it. Yes. And she felt helpless and terrified because of these two individuals that had come into Mr. Alexander's house, right? Right, or something that occurred at that time. Well, no. At this particular time, the story was that, or her statement to you, was that a man and a woman had come in and killed Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. 
And that was your realm of knowledge at that point, correct? When you administered this, right? Yes. And then for the next part, part three, it does have a legend, doesn't it? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? It has a legend? Yes. Uh, zero is not at all or only one time. One is once a week or less. Two is two to four times a week. And four is five or more times a week. Yes. Correct? So if we go to question 22, it says, having upsetting thoughts or images about the traumatic event that came into your head when you didn't want them to, 22, she said number three, which is five or more times a week, almost always, right? Yes. And these images are of these two individuals coming in and killing Mr. Alexander, right? Uh, well, yeah, at that time, yes, that's what I believed. And 23, she was asked if she had any bad dreams or nightmares about this killing of Mr. Alexander by these two people, and she said... Zero, right? That's See? correct. Which means that not at all or only one time, yes. right? One of the things that uh, you told us was that she was having trouble sleeping. Do you remember that? I do. But if she was having trouble sleeping, it wasn't because of this event involving this man and this woman that came in, right? Objection, speculation. The stain. Based on this, she does say she doesn't have any nightmares about the traumatic event, right? Correct. In terms of reliving the event, number 24, she answered one, which is once a week or less, right? Yes. And again, we're talking about the same event at that, at that point involved a man and a woman, right? Well, we don't know that. Well, yeah, you do know that because that's what she told you at that but point, That's what right? she told me, but I want to make it very, very uh, clear. Is that what she told you? Can you finish his answer, please? It's yes. I'd like to make it clear to you that she's responding to some trauma. Nowhere on the test, except when it asks to describe the trauma, is the trauma, specific trauma, that important. In other words, it's not, it's not critical to the outcome of the test. In her, in her uh, thinking and in her responsiveness, she could have been responding to the trauma that occurred on that day. Granted, she told me one story, and we found out later that there was another story. But both would have been perceived as traumas. So it's possible, and I'm not saying that it is for sure, it's possible that the trauma she was referring to was actually due to the killing. But because of the story she constructed, she had to attribute it, attribute it rather, to this made-up story. You don't know that, do you? No, I don't. I'm speculating. Right. Made it up right now. Speculating. No okay. clinical judgment, okay. sir. That's made up. Overruled. Clinical judgment. Sir, you just used the word speculating, didn't you? Okay. I, I used the word. I, I sure. Misspoke. And speculating means it could be made up, right? Yes, that's one possibility. It could be made All up. right. Thank you. In terms of question 34. You said, the question was, are you having trouble falling or staying asleep? You see that? See that? Yes. And question 34, her answer was number two, right? Yes. Which is two to four times a week, right? Yes. But it doesn't involve any nightmares involving this traumatic event. That's correct. She was asked on part four, indicate if the problems you rated in part three have interfered with any of the following areas. Correct? You see that? Yes. And she says, except for 45, schoolwork, that all of this has interfered with work, household chores, relationships with friends, her sex life, right? Yes. General satisfaction with life, an overall level of functioning in all areas of her life, right? That's correct. And the event that we're talking about 
is the killing of Mr. Alexander by these two individuals. Well, she was incarcerated at the time. Sir, Over, overruled. You may answer. She was incarcerated at the time, and therefore many of her, all of her life activities were impeded. Those are the answers, those are the questions, and those are the responses, right? That's correct. The other test that you conducted was the MCMI, right? Correct. Uh, are you familiar with some, the MMPI? I am. And what does that stand for? The Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. And how many questions does that have, sir? 567. And who is that normed to? Who is that normed to? Well, there's several subpopulations. Sure. But it's normed to um, primarily individuals who are in therapy. So you're saying the MMPI is a norm to people in therapy? As a rule, yes. And so if you're not in therapy, then it's not norm to you? Well, there are some subpopulations that it's sampled to. So you have to be in therapy. In other words, everybody that um, provided the information for the MMPI, you're saying, had to be in some sort of therapy. There are right? several different scales. There's a correctional scale. There's a um, uh, people that are in therapy. There's, a, there's also another scale for those people, perhaps, that are involved with physical ailments. There are several different ways that you can have that test scored. And there's all these questions, and it does have a validity scale, right? Yes, it does. And you are saying that it is not um, geared to the normal population. Is that what you're saying? The Primarily, it involves, that's right, it involves people that have been diagnosed with some disorder. But it is for the normal population, correct? When you say normal, what do you mean? I'm talking about somebody who is out in the population. There's an issue as to what their diagnosis is. And this is one of the tests that they get. That's one of the tests that's used to help diagnose. But you chose to give one that, that had 175 questions, right? That's correct. And that one, sir, the way it works is that gives you a number, right? A base rate, if you will, a number, doesn't it? No. Well, you talked about it uh, on direct examination, and isn't there something called the final base rate score that it gives you? Well, it doesn't just give you one score. Well, it gives you numerous scores and scales. To limit your results to one number is a very narrow approach to am that I asking, test. Am I asking you to narrow your approach to one number right now? Well, you are. You're saying that there's one number there called the base rate score. Well, there's a lot of base rate scores here, right? Yes, for, for several different factors. Let's take a look at these right here. Take a look at exhibit 541. Do you recognize what's in 541? Yes. What is it? This is a printout with, from the, MM, the MCMI profile. And what's behind it? What's behind it? Yes. Those are the base rate scores for approximately 25 different characteristics. And for who are they? These are Ms. Arias. All right. Did you know me Yes. I move for the admission of Exhibit 541. Objection. 541 is admitted. Take a look at uh, the second page, and this is talking about base rate scores, correct? Yes. Then we have a 60, and then we have a 75, right? Correct. The indication between 60 and 75 is that that does not indicate the presence of any clinical diagnosis, correct? It's below the cutoff point. Right. The cutoff is the 75, right? Yes. However, you, that's yes an improper no. use of... Is it? You just said that. It is, isn't it? But that's an improper use of the test. I'm not asking you if that's an improper use of the test. You just told me that that's the cutoff, right? Typically speaking, when we're analyzing the data in some specific ways, but there are very complex computer algorithms that allow us to compare the relative heights of these, sc these scales and form a clinical opinion based upon the relative heights. It's not just a matter of taking a scale and measuring the score. It's more complex than that. This document that you have here is the document MMC MCMI3 base rate scores. This is something that you attach to your report, correct? Yes. And it is for Miss Arias, right? Correct. And you also just told me that for the diagnosis issue, it's 75 to 85 that indicates the presence 
of some sort of, if you will, clinical disorder, right? Relative elevations are as important as absolute I, elevations. I understand that, but you just indicated this is where the clinical uh, diagnosis comes in of any disorder. No, that's not, that's, as I said, that's, that's an improper use of the interpretation of this test. So well, then why have numbers then? If, if, we're not go, if they're not going to mean anything, then why have a number then? They do have a meaning, and but that, not the meaning you are giving to them. Well, we then take a look at her profile. Take a look at the PTSD. Do you yes. see that? Yes. It's got 10, and her unadjusted score is what? You're looking at a score that has Sir, no meaning. I understand that that's what you want to tell us. What is the number that I'm pointing to there? 69. And if we move that over, what is the number that's right across from that? 69. So with regard to Miss Arias, the number, even though you want to interpret it, the number that the computer assigned to it is 69, right? You're misinterpreting the I, value of the test. You, I, you have no knowledge in this area. So. Right. I understand that you yeah. say I have no knowledge. But you can't, I, you can't see the number there, can't you? Of course. And what is that number there? 69. And it, it's both for the adjusted, unadjusted, and the final, right? Yes. If we then go over to your base rate scores... You see, there's the 60, then there's a 75 to 85. Her PTSD score of 69 is below the 75, correct? The 75 doesn't mean anything. Right, it doesn't mean anything. That's why they threw it in there, right? You're misinterpreting no, the... No, no. I studied these tests for years, I know. and you are misinterpreting it, sir. Right, they put that number 75 because it doesn't mean a thing, right? It means something, but not the way you're saying it. Well... It is, mathematically speaking, 69 is below 75, isn't it? Well, of course. And if we're talking about this computer printout and PTSD and this issue involving uh, whether or not there's a clinical disorder, the clinical disorder falls between the 75 and the 85, is what you previously told me, right? That is not right. Well, that's what you told me before, right? Objection, this characterizes this testimony. Overruled. You may answer. What I'm telling you no, is that... No, Judge, he's being not I'm not going to be uh, characterized as giving you the wrong information. Yes. Listen carefully to the question. Mr. Martinez, restate your question. With regard to this issue here between 75 and the 85, do you remember previously telling me that that is an area that indicates a clinical disorder? No, I don't remember saying that, and if I did, I misspoke. So... You, do you have any problems with your memory because this just happened? No, I do not have problems with my memory, sir. And this MMPI, this MCMI, sir, this actually is a test that is uh, was developed on psychiatric patients, correct? Yes. And the psychiatric patients were the reference group, right? Yes. And it was the psychiatric patients that were the reference group <coughs> rather than individuals drawn from the general population, right? Correct. Whereas for the MMPI, there were individuals from the general population, correct? As well. No, the MMPI is different because that, sir, draws individuals from the general population, not psychiatric patients, right? There are subpopulations that have been validated on the MMPI as well. I know, but the question is this, or isn't it true that the MMPI involves individuals drawn from the general population, whereas this test involves people who are psychiatric patients? Yes, and that's why I use this test. But the defendant is not a psychiatric patient, is she? Well, I hypothesized that she had a psychiatric condition. And therefore, right. I felt this test was much more appropriate for her to confirm a hypothesis that I had made based upon my analysis of all the other information that I had a chance to review. And this test, sir, measures or indicates the person who's taking this test, they're standing on the scales as compared only with other psychiatric patients, right? Yes. Not with the general population. Um, there are actually several different sub 
uh, validated groups for the MCMI, but this particular one was validated on psychiatric. Right, and so what we're doing here is we're comparing her answers, if you will, to those of psychiatric patients, right? Yes. This scoring system here does not allow for her scores to be interpreted according to a criterion of normality that would be important to assess in a court case, right? I was comparing her diagnosis. Yes or no? Could you repeat your question, please? Isn't it true that this instrument, the one that you gave her, the MCMI, does not allow for a defendant or the client score to be interpreted according to a criterion of normality that may be important, maybe an important factor to assess in a court case? Well, that's correct by itself. Right. That's true. Right. It's saying basically that this is not something that is set up to be used in a court case. No, that's not what it says. Well, it does say this instrument does not allow for a client's or a defendant's score to be interpreted according to a criterion of normality that might be an important factor to assess in a court case. Yes or no? That's what it says. And what are you reading from, sir? Uh, and, sir, I ask the questions. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. The base rate that we've talked about, and that's what we're talking about here. Yes. You see that? Those base rate norms do not allow, sir, in this case, for the description of normal behavior because there is no normal reference group, right? That's right, but I was looking for a... Yes, yes or no, that's, you answered my question. That, I'd right? like to know what you're reading from, sir. Let's look at refresh my memory. And, sir, with regard to this test... Your Honor, can we have the state disclose to the witness so that he understands? He's directly quoting from an article, and it's maybe quoted out of text without the, without the doctor knowing exactly what he's talking about. All right, we're going to take the noon recess at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, please be back in the designated area 125. Please remember the admission you are used. Please approach. You can step down. We are at recess.